I'd like to start off with a, with a joke first, actually. Classic one. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure the answer, but actually it's a pretty bad radiation problem. Right. <laughs> okay. Right here, and uh, this is Sarah at Sea. We're looking at um, basically creating a radiation map of the world of over all the oceans. And so basically, we don't want our fish to end up like that. Right, let's see if we can do that. Okay, so why do oceans matter? Now, oceans cover most of the world. 70% uh, of the world is water, that's pretty important. And most of the earth biomass, so like animals and course, fish, are in the water. So that's obviously really important to us and we want to keep them alive. Now, we were thinking about possible causes, so water pollution, like when radiation was first discovered, we like to really pollute the water with it. Now, that's obviously not a good idea, but it was done. So, also things like trash in the water, and um, radiation from space, this is more background radiation, but still there. Um, and, but one of the main ones is uh, nuclear weapons testing. As you can see here on the map, actually, the most of the nuclear weapons sites uh, are in the water. Now that's not very good for the ocean at all, and we'd really like to see what effect that has had on the animals there, and what sort of sort of fish on there, and stuff like Now, so this is a it's a radiation map, but it's not. It's basically what people thought was a radiation map of the Fukushima disaster. Really, it's a map of the tidal waves after the Fukushima disaster and how it affected the oceans. But if you search up on Google radiation map after Fukushima or any radiation map, this is the first thing that comes up. That tells us just how little we know about the radiation in our water. And to be, to be honest, that's really quite shocking. So we're looking at methods of like looking at radiation in water. <coughs> One of the main met methods is to go out, collect a sample, bring it back to a lab, and then basically test it, this will take a week or maybe two, and that's very time consuming and you're only really getting a very limited source. Another method could be going out in a boat and using maybe a dryer counter to test the water, but this is also very time consuming and it needs a person to operate it. Now, our idea is to use a autonomous vessel called the Autonaut. And it also contains the time fixture and it sends us data that we're able to uh, connect to our computer. As you can see, this is the automobile, it's completely autonomous, it doesn't need anyone to operate it, and it's actually quite efficient in power. It, it's able to wage drive it along, so it goes around the area and then it sends us data back that we're able to sort through with a program that then puts it onto a map for us. <coughs> and we use Tableau. And here is a map of some of our data so far. So this is taken from St. Ives in Cornwall. And as you can see in the middle, there's a pretty major crater of radiation there, but there are also other areas that aren't really bad radiation. So why is it here? What sort of radiation? It could be radiation waste, or it's probably not background radiation exactly everywhere. Um, and I highly doubt it's nuclear weapons testing. <laughs> so I think we're alright there, but it would be interesting to find out why it's there. Now, as a famous movie, movie quote once said, we are going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> now, the further development for Sanity is to kind of put these ships on ferries. <coughs> ships that are able to travel the world and then we get a lot more data. Now, we would then like to aim to talk to these very companies and hopefully get a time fixture on that and get more data from it. And that is so <laughs>